So hi, I'm Mati and I'm, I'm working at Malamax and, and we are uh, another hardware vendor. Um, and we, are, we, are, we want to be part of the, uh, the community and we want, want to be part of the uh, effort and we want our, to, to provide a driver that you can just run Kuraga on top of a box with our driver or configure an FDB entry or set a VXLAN tunnel and it, will, and, and it will just work. And this is something that I think everybody in this, this room uh, desire. And you know, uh, trying to figure out what would be the best way to do it and what, what are the steps to do it. And it is something that uh, I understand from Andy that he's, he's going to talk about it in tomorrow's session. So this is some slide that I uh, prepared, pre prepared. So sorry, Andy, I will take part of, I will talk part of the thing we, we talked about. Um, okay, so uh, we have, we try to, to figure out what will be the step. And since we want, we want to be player from today, and this is not a secret, our SDK, and uh, I believe that uh, some other hardware vendor uh, SDK are in user space, we need to understand what would be the best way to start working. And we are, as I said, we don't want to first port all our SDK functionality to the kernel, and I'm not getting to the, uh, um, I'm not trying to say whether it is the right or, n or wrong way. I'm just saying that it can't be happened from the first day because as you probably know, the, there are more than two or 10 line of code in our SDK. So we want a rollout phase and we want, we want to take a baby step in all together and we are trying to figure out what, what are the, those steps. Um, so as we see the first step together is to provide native ISP port, meaning that each silicon port will have a device represent the port. As a result, you, you will get an ability to send or receive packet via this port, and actually you will get 30, 36 or whatever number of ports are on, on this device, uh, NIX. Um, on top of that, we, we will provide, uh, of course, the state, state reflection of those, those links, though, meaning that when the one, the, one of the, those links get down, it will reflect to the kernel net device. Um, counters may be there as well, so if you read those, uh, the, the, the port counters, you will get the ca counters from the hardware. Uh, may, um, some basic functionality may be there as well, like MTU speed, but this is not a mandatory for my, for, uh, my point of view. Um, next step will be to put some resource management logic inside it, inside it, this kernel module that represents the switch. And we had a few debates before on the resource manager where, where it should be and how it should work. Um, problem is that some of the hardware are not deterministic, meaning that you have huge table in that hardware um, and this huge table used for a lot of different logical table, meaning you have a huge TCOM table that could be used for ACL or router or you have a huge hash table that can use for either MPLS, VXLAN, and algorithmic LPM. So language like P4 or uh, John proposal and advertising some table size won't help here. You need some vendor specific driver that will advertise or will uh, reject or approve some uh, table and reinsertion operation. So um, this should be the next step in, in uh, as I see it, in our uh, phasing, in our uh, porting to, uh, of our SDK to the uh, driver, to the kernel, sorry. And from that point, actually, we could, we could have a fully functional silicon by providing all the above, all the uh, below functionality NADEV and resource manager from the kernel and all the other functionality will be, again, at the first stage, provided by user space by 
going uh, by, by doing Topolin, actually it is going from the kernel to the user space and, and configuring the hardware. We understand that this is not desirable and this is not what we aim to do, but uh, in order to provide a fully functional silicon, this is what we want to do. This would be the next steps. So this, is, this would be the, uh, and from that point, we will start porting tables by, one by one. So we will pull the FDB code into the kernel, then we can port ACL code into the kernel, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, question at that stage? Nice. Um, moving forward, we can uh, start on, we can try to understand what is the best way to uh, port complex uh, structure, data, data structure, like algorithmic LPM, algorithmic TCAM, uh, and so, and talked about uh, some bulk operation uh, from kernel to the driver in order to do operation like ISSU in service software upgrade. And so when you, are wa when you want to bring down your driver and then reboot it or bring it up again and get all the information that was there before from, the, from all the distributed kernel table. Um, that's all. Any question? I, oh, I think it's a, a good idea, and it's been proposed in other scenarios to start with a net dev based driver that just does pure transmit receive functionality, and, and uh, that, that's good. You should get that into the kernel as soon as you can. Uh, as for the, the next steps where you start having the resource manager implemented and then uh, one by one moving things into the APIs that whatever we come with for switching offload. I think you need to do that, those intermediate steps before you start supporting our stuff in your own little playground somewhere. Uh, I'm not against people reviewing the work that you're doing step by step on a net dev list, but I'm not, I don't think I want to put that in my tree during those steps. Uh, so once you go full bore into the APIs that we have in the tree and are supporting that, that's when I would like to see that aspect of your changes. So I think the, or, and another, another thing to think about here is part of this exercise is about helping us figure out what your needs are, okay? Because we have, uh, our scope is limited currently because we haven't seen what all of these devices want to do. And so that's really important for you to expose to us what it is that the outcome is that you want and discuss with us what's a reasonable way to achieve that goal. And so I think that's where the most important part of your process from our perspective uh, and what the biggest benefit is for Linux as, as a whole during the supporting process of your SDKs. So, so great to hear that. Um, just one question. So, okay, the NetDev report is, is fair enough. We can uh, submit something like that and, uh, and uh, we can try to think out how we can open it and it is a fair amount of work. Um, about all the block of SDK, we are trying to figure out what is the best way. And uh, all or nothing is probably, from our point of view, uh, not a good solution. Question is whether we can submit a driver which has only limited functionality and uh, have some extension that are currently closed. They are not part of the they are not closed, they are open, but they are, they are not part of the, uh, the upstream that you can plug in into this upstream driver. And You're gonna have to export things that I'm not too happy about to, in order to facilitate that. So I, I really think, so for example, if you want to add the code that manages the switch, switching offload resources and the tables and stuff abstractly, which you need anyways for your final driver, that's fine. But the interface is to plug into that. No, you can have that as changes in your local tree that plug that stuff in and you can play with that however you want in your external tree, but I don't want new interfaces exported inside of my tree. No, no, what, what, what I meant is, let's assume that I, I, I will provide a kernel driver, a kernel upstream driver with all, all the right API. So you will have all the right API. So part, part of them will be in null implementation because currently it is missing from the uh, um, the kernel driver, 
but we will provide the ability, this ability won't be part of the upstream to uh, make those API uh, fully functional via calling to user space code. So let Which, me, can I interject bot. for a second, Dave? Sure. So uh, one of the things I wanted to just ask about from what I heard a second ago, um, it sounded like you said, don't, you know, don't bring it into my tree unless it's sort of done. Um, I'm saying don't bring into my tree something that makes its own APIs and exports it to user space and has this user land component that okay, programs perfect. things that we haven't made Got APIs it. for yet. Okay, but I think but a slow evolution of like okay, here are the L2 fun here's the L2 functionality, here's the implement and no argument. In Absolutely. The perfect, do, yeah, do it. and then here's the L3 and or here's the ACL. Right. So Anything you can in, implement with APIs we have already, that's perfectly fine. Perfect. Okay, so bring it into pieces and I think you really touched on a key point which was that if you know, the, the first people that are there to break open are the ones that get to help define those APIs a little bit better and really help indicate this is what's important. You know, this is what hardware can do because we aren't at a point where we have a great idea right now of what could be done. And I mean, another process that goes along with this is sometimes you think you, you think what you actually wanted was X and actually we can show you that Y is the destination, for example. So, yeah. Okay. This is the two-way street. So I think, I think, yeah, I got the impression you guys were... Close, so cool, but thanks We're, for the clarification. I, yeah. I, I, to, I totally agree with the, the, the gradual implementation of various uh, offloading features for facilities we have already, but for the stuff that we don't define interfaces and infrastructure for, I don't want you bypassing and going into user space or whatever and adding new interfaces that we don't have yet, specifically for the facilitation of your ongoing work. You can do that in an external tree, and I don't think that's much of a burden, if it, honestly, in my opinion. Okay. I just want to add, I, I'm from Mellanox as well, Matty's colleague. He's my boss, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to add, there are, uh, as Matty said, there are many uh, uh, drivers or, or things that need to be run, uh, written to the kernel, which requires a lot of uh, expertise and knowledge on the hardware, but have some very complex algorithms that needs to be addressed. There was a comment here that uh, people are not aware of what the hardware and what the switches can do. and. Uh, I really encourage once we start to do those uh, interfaces to the kernel for people that want to take a part of this effort to approach Mellanox and we will happily share devices and try to uh, use the or leverage the community work on that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was hoping they would say it, but I should say this. This was the switch side of Mellanox. They actually have fairly open drivers on the NIC side. A bunch of you guys are familiar with that. So uh, this was only a portion of the of the company that we are talking about. Uh, <coughs> All right. So this is that was the last of the vendor presentation, so to say. Um, I don't know if we should do a bio break because we have probably another hour or more of of uh, or should we keep going? What's the general vote? Keep going. All right. Let's keep going. So next we have Rupa, we're going to talk a little bit about device modeling and, and the next theme, so to say, is um, Rupa is going to talk a little bit about stuff on switch dev. Uh, we're going to have Scott talk a little bit about Rocker as the back end, which we've heard a little bit about. We're going to have uh, Sanjay talk a little bit about switch abstraction API, which is something that they're trying to get through. And we're going to have the Qualcomm people come and talk about what small devices look like and, and why they're very interesting to us. So Rupa. Hello everyone, my name is Rupa and I work for Cumulus. I have not a lot to say, uh, just a few things that have been going upstream, uh, going on upstream. Uh, no, just a, this is just a list for myself. Um, the, the, I, I like the, the discussion on um, uh, the policies for offloads and r right now my focus has been on the default policy for the kernel. Um, I'm trying to make it same as how NIC offloads worked. Basically, by default, if you do a bridge FDB add dev SWP1, and if SWP1 happens to be a switch port, and the switch port expresses interest in hardware offload, it basically goes to hardware. The FDB entry goes to hardware. And if there is no resource in hardware, it should actually fail the operation. So that's uh, where uh, my focus has been, and I've been trying to uh, submit patches in that direction. And um, in our previous meetings on this topic and BOFs, uh, we've always uh, said that uh, the 
policy for the kernel uh, for resource problems, default policy would be if per operation, if the if you want it to go software only or kernel only, you could set a flag on the operation, the Netlink operation, saying that kernel only or hardware only. For Bridge FTB today, there is such a mechanism to actually do a master and self flags, which works works very well. And okay, and the feature flag on the NetDev for the driver to indicate uh, support for offload. Uh, can be turned off similar to how NIC features can be turned off via ETH tool today. Apart from that, um, things in SwitchDev happening right now, uh, we still need uh, FDB offloads to use the NetIF hardware switch offload flag, which I'm currently working on. And uh, is, okay, another thing that uh, is important to discuss is handling offloads through stack net devices. We have discussed this on, uh, on the mailing list uh, with Scott and Jiri and everybody else. And today we are traversing the tree to go to the lower device, but in previous BOFs and discussions, we have, it has always come up if we should introduce a switch device, uh, a special device. I can see Scott smiling. Uh, a switch device for, uh, to represent the switch when you don't have a port to resolve the operation to. But that has always been, uh, the position has always been to introduce it when it's required and not right now. And I think uh, Scott al already has patches for FIB dev to use a similar approach to go through stack net devices to the switch driver. So we'll see as long as uh, that works, we will go on and maybe in the future we'll add a uh, switch device-like thing for ACLs and stuff. Other than that, uh, I'm also working on, uh, I had RFC patches uh, submitted for duplicate packet handling, which uh, Wilson talked about in the hardware acceleration offload uh, tutorial, uh, where packets from switch, which are already forwarded in hardware, we want the kernel to not re-forward them. So, yeah, you will see some patches on that. There is already some discussions uh, going on. And the next in line is uh, hardware counters for bridge forwarded packets and so on. I think we will uh, probably carry this discussion uh, on NetDev. We'll submit some patches on, on that. And, okay. Uh, so, so on a switch, uh, the, C, the kernel doesn't see all the packets. It, so it naturally, the software doesn't count everything. So there are hardware counters. Hardware maintains counters for bridge packets, for routed packets, and so on. And uh, so f for switch ports today, what we do is, uh, yeah, for some of the counters, we actually, we use ton tab driver, and we have extensions to actually add these counters to the kernel. Now this has to be extended to something like the bridge device. If you're using a bridge and all switch ports are in it and the bridge net device should actually reflect all the packets that are bridged, whether in hardware or software. So we probably will need some mechanism to do that there as well. So he's like a NDO switch get stats, so yeah, something set like this. stats, something like that, which will just add the hardware stats to. Um, there is the additional complication, right? In a standard switch, a broadcast frame will get broadcast internally and then up to the CPU and potentially broadcast again. So it, this will require more than just simple addition. It'll have to have policies attached to it. But we clearly need one more layer of indirection for the offload counter case. Counter. So you're saying that in the case where we have a switch dev, the broadcast will come in and then we figure out what software ports we put it through and we don't want to count it again from the places we the hardware set to. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I think the last on the list is lag. Uh, this is simple lag. Uh, um, and this can be achieved, the basic stuff can be achieved by notifiers today. The switch, switch driver can actually listen to a port going into a bond and actually grab all the bond attributes and pass it on to hardware. So we think that probably the switch driver can listen, use the existing notifiers mechanism and uh, support this. There are 
also hardware NIC drivers that use those notifiers as well to program bonding off loads bonding and, off and the into their chips. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, um, that's all I had actually. Any questions? Sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank you.